Uh, good morning. How are you guys doing? All right. All right. I like to hear that. So uh, Google tried to make me sign a release before I spoke that said I would use that other term for GWT, but I refused. So <laughs> it's like seam bijection. If it's not in the dictionary, I don't say it. So, uh, so welcome. This is uh, cool and useful stuff. Uh, I would appreciate it. This, this is a little bit different format for me. I usually talk for about 90 minutes, so uh, usually I take questions as I speak. Uh, today, however, I'm going to have to save questions up till the end, so, so please hold your questions till the end so I make sure I can get all this information in. Uh, another thing I'd like to tell you guys is uh, make this as social an event as you can. One, one of the big reasons you should be here is to meet new people, make new contacts, and, and you never know where things are going to go when you meet people at a place like this. So this is cool and useful stuff. My name is David Geary. <clears throat> Let's get started. Uh, a little bit about me. Greg's already told you some things about me, so I won't do, a, do an enumerated list here. Uh, the, the highlights are I worked for Sun from 94 to 97. And I also have experience with both Swing and Java server faces, both, both of which are interesting in light of GWT. GWT essentially is Swing that runs in a browser without something clunky like Web Start. Of course, that, that analogy is not 100% ironclad, but it, it works. <clears throat> okay. Uh, code for this talk is from my book, which is out on the table. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you signed up for this conference, you signed a release that said you would buy two books while you were here. <clears throat> I suggest you buy two copies of this. Uh, this is also my website. We'll take a look at this. In fact, all my demos today I'm going to run live off my website, which makes me really nervous after Billy Hoffman's talk yesterday. So, <laughs> Billy's not in the audience, is he? Okay, good. This is one of my favorite quotes by a pretty smart guy. And I just, just wanted to say thank you to all the unreasonable developers at Google who have created GWT, because they have really given us a revolutionary framework unlike any other framework that's come before it. Never before have we had the ability to create desktop-like applications that run in a browser and write that in pure Java. And that, for me, is pure joy. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about custom widgets. We're going to talk about what kinds of custom widgets there are, how you implement them. Uh, then we'll switch over. We'll talk about drag and drop. GWT right now does not support drag and drop, but they're planning on it. Uh, I implemented some simple drag and drop stuff that I'll show you. And then finally, we'll wrap up with uh, viewports. <clears throat> So, so how many people have created custom widgets here? How many people are Struts developers in here, by the way? Anybody? Interesting. OK. Um, so here's some the three different types of custom widgets. We have composites, composite widgets, which extend the composite class. Composite extends widget. And you compose widgets from existing widgets. So for example, in a minute, I'm going to show you an example of an autocomplete text box custom widget that's composed of three other widgets, a text box, a pop-up panel that pops up under the text box, and a list box that goes in the pop-up panel that displays completion items as you type in the text box. We also have something I call intermediate widgets, which are widgets that extend subclasses of widgets. So you might extend, for instance, horizontal panel to implement a toolbar component. In fact, we'll see an intermediate widget in a demo here in a few minutes that does that. And then finally, we have low-level widgets. Low-level widgets extend the widget class directly, and you create and manipulate DOM elements. So for low-level widgets, you're right down at the metal. You're creating DOM elements, <clears throat> which, by the way, are essentially peers in GWT. How many people have used AWT? Do, do you guys know that AWT was created by a handful of people in six weeks? For those of you that raised your hand, you probably believe that, right? <laughs> uh, 
Do, do you know why they were able to create AWT so quickly? Anybody? Because AWT is a what kind of framework? Peer-based, right? When you create an AWT button, you're creating a thin Java veneer on top of a native button. If you're on Motif, you have a Motif button. If you're on Windows, you have a Windows button, and so on. GWT is also a peer-based framework, except our peers are not native controls. They are what? Two words. First one is DOM. DOM elements. Okay, Those are our peers in GWT. And when you implement low-level widgets, you're working at that peer level. You're actually creating DOM elements and manipulating them. And we'll see how we do that in just a minute. So here's an autocomplete text box. It's composed of three widgets. Our text box, we have a pop-up panel here, and then inside there we have our list box with our completion items. Let's push this off to the side. And here's the class for this. This is an abstract class. It extends the composite class. And here are the three widgets that compose an autocomplete text box. We have the text box, the pop-up panel, and the list box. In the constructor, we call init widget because a composite has to explicitly wrap one of the, of the widgets that it composes. <clears throat> if we just create an instance of this class, without this method, we couldn't get the text out of our autocomplete text box because an autocomplete text box is a composite. And composites don't have a get text method like text box does. So composites are opaque wrappers. They contain other widgets, but you can't really see those widgets or manipulate those widgets directly when you use an instance of this custom widget. So this method is a pass-through method that allows the user to get the text out of the autocomplete text box, which is probably a pretty useful feature. <laughs> and what we do is we do that by delegating to the text box and returning the text out of the text box. Here's an example of an intermediate widget. And you can't really see this widget very well. But it's in each of these columns. Uh, this is a flex table in GWT. How many people have used flex tables? Uh, this flex table is a little bit different. It lets you dynamically resize the columns of the table. So, so you can click here and drag, and you can actually dynamically resize the columns. We'll see a demo of this here in, in a minute. But what I've done is in these column headers, I've placed a custom widget that looks like this. It extends horizontal panel, and it contains two widgets. One is the title of the column heading, and the other is this little HTML widget right here. And inside of here, I have a mouse listener that listens to mouse events. So when you click and drag inside of this widget, I respond to that and resize the columns dynamically. Finally, we have a low-level widget. This is an error message, and it's a custom widget. And it extends widget directly. So this is a low-level widget. Notice here we are calling set element. We are setting the peer for this custom widget. And we're setting it to a div. This is a static method that creates a div, or more correctly, creates a Java object that represents a div. <clears throat> and we pass that to the set element method. We also call set style name. How, how many people use add style name? OK, set style name sets a default name for your widget. So if you define a CSS class with this name, GWT will automatically apply it to all instances of this class. And, and if you don't know this, GWT has that built in for all of its built-in widgets. If you define a CSS class, GWT-label, for instance, GWT will apply that to all your labels. Effectively, what you can do then is define style sheets that define skins or themes for your applications. <clears throat> so we create the div, we set the style name, and here's the set text method. In the set text method, we call dom set inner text, which as you all know by now, 
is very efficient, right? <laughs> and we pass it the element and we pass it the text. Here I've overridden set visible. Of course, I call the super version of that method so that the widget actually appears or disappears. <clears throat> and then if it's visible, I apply a scriptaculous effect to that using JNSI. So I mentioned the DOM class. Here's, here's a summary of the DOM class. DOM class has more than 80 static methods. When I wrote this slide, it had 83. And I know how hard it is to remove methods from a public API, so I feel pretty confident with that statement. Uh, there are three types of methods, essentially. Methods that create elements. We've already seen that with the create div method on the last slide. And then we have methods that manipulate the DOM. So here we're appending a child element to a parent. And we also have methods that tell us information about events. This is the website for the GWT Solutions book. Um, you can actually hit this URL if you want. Uh, it makes me kind of nervous to say that, but uh, we do have wireless in here, so. So this is where I'm at. Coolandusefulgwt.com. Uh, this is a website. I put this website together last week uh, in about 48 hours, uh, about three of which I slept. So um, whoever's doing that, please stop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. Um, <laughs> wow, I feel powerful now. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so there's other stuff on here. You can, you can browse around those tabs if you want. You, you might notice I have some fading in and fading out going here, some gratuitous animations, which I probably shouldn't be doing, but it's just too much fun to pass up. <laughs> and here are some examples from the book. Let, let's start off and take a look at that message widget. So this is a login application, simple login application. If you try to log in without a username or a password, you get treated like this. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that great? It's, no, that is wrong. <laughs> so uh, anybody know how that, that message is shaking? Scriptaculous. scriptaculous, yeah. So I, so I have scriptaculous effects using JNSI integrated into this custom widget to do the shaking effect. So that's our uh, message widget. Here's the flex table. <clears throat> so I've done two things with this flex table. I've, I've in, implemented dynamic resizing of columns with the custom widget we just talked about. I've also implemented paging down here. GWT makes it really easy to implement a uh, cell that spans multiple columns, and so that's what I have down here at the bottom, and I can page through this data, which isn't very much. There it is. And I can also, so this is, these are my custom widget. I have a resizable cell panel in each of these columns. You notice the cursor changes. I'm changing the cursor with what method? Uh, Add style name, right? So now we can drag these and actually resize these columns in real time, which, which is a pretty nice addition to the flex table. And let's see, one more thing, autocomplete. So when I wrote this custom widget, which, which I must tell you was grueling to implement, took, took me almost four full days to implement this widget. And, and I have to say thank you to Kelly Norton for uh, helping me out with a bug that I ran into with this. 
But uh, this is the way it works. If you type a character in here, <clears throat> I support both Colorado and New York. I used to live in both states, so I support those. If you, if you type eight, you get that. I can type the down arrow key and navigate through this guy. And when I'm ready, I hit enter. And when I do that, notice I fill in city and state. This is Ajax, baby. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Uh, <laughs> but by the way, how did I do Ajax here? Do you know? How did I do it, though? You know how I did it? I called textbox.setText. That's all I did. GWT, under the covers, takes care of incrementally updating the DOM. This is the beauty of the GWT, is that I do AJAX without even knowing that I'm doing AJAX, without even knowing what AJAX is or what it stands for. <laughs> Amen to that, right? I can just say set text, and boom, GWT does the, same, does the right thing. Um, I have to tell you a quick story. I, I told you this, this was hard for me to implement. And it was, I was up late one night and I finally got this working and I was so excited. And my wife was asleep and I went in and woke her up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I said, hey, you gotta come in here, you gotta see this. And so she kind of rolled her eyes, came in, into my office and I sat her down. And what I had in here was I had the cursor in there. I said, okay, I said type eight. And she did, I said, okay, now hit the down arrow twice and then hit enter. And so she did. And that's where we live. I said, hey, look, it filled in Monument, Colorado. I said, that's Ajax, baby. I always call my wife baby. I said, that's Ajax, baby, look at that. And uh, she turns to me and she says, is that all it does? <laughs> so now, now we're getting divorced, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what, I told you I wasn't gonna take any questions until the end, but, but if, you, if you want, I'll take just a couple quick questions. Anybody have a question? No? Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some drag and drop. Uh, it, it's interesting to me, the more I use GWT, the more I wind up saying, wow, that's really cool. Uh, one, one day I was thinking about this, and, and I was thinking, you know, it's kind of a litmus test for, for uh, web application frameworks. If you can do drag and drop, in a web application framework, that, that says something. And uh, you can't with GWT, so I don't know what that says, but uh, you can do it easily yourself. Uh, in fact, drag and drop is almost ridiculously easy with GWT. <clears throat> Over the next few slides, I'm gonna show you how to implement drag and drop, and there are three central players. First, there's absolute panel, <clears throat> which much to my surprise has nothing to do with alcohol. <clears throat> Hey, that's my best material, guys, come on. <laughs> Absolute panel allows you to place widgets on the panel, how? At what kind of location? Starts with a P. Pixel, okay, so you, so you can locate widgets on an absolute panel by pixel location. We have mouse listener, and then we have focus panel. If, if you take all three of these things, you should be able to do drag and drop. Now, now, before I show you how to do this, is I have to say, first of all, GWT right now does not support drag and drop, but they plan on doing so. And when they do so, I expect they'll do the right thing, unlike me, which, which I really did the wrong thing. And what I did was I just kind of pasted drag and drop on top of GWT. I have a drag panel. You can throw widgets on the panel and you can drag them around on the panel. Uh, <clears throat> so you can throw a tree onto the panel, for instance, and drag the tree around but you can't drag a tree item out of the tree and drop it on some other widget. I expect when, when the GWT folks implement drag and drop that they'll do it at a much lower level so that you can do things like drag tree items out of trees. With all that said, here's the drag panel. It extends absolute panel. When you add a widget, I call this method. So let's say you give me a button I wrap that button in a focus panel. I attach a mouse listener to the focus panel. And then I add the focus panel to my drag panel. I do this because there's only four widgets in GWT that in GWT speak source mouse events. 
In other words, there's only four classes or four widgets that will fire mouse events to listeners when those mouse events occur. One of those is focus panel. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking your widget, wrapping it in an, an invisible focus panel, and adding a bunch of focus panels so I can detect mouse events. In JavaScript, of course, events bubble up, so if you click on the button, that event will bubble up to the focus panel, and I'll handle the event with this mouse listener. Notice this is protected so you can override the, the mouse dragger effectively. So this is the panel. <clears throat> the rest of our time, we're going to focus on this mouse listener's implementation. Here's what I do when the mouse goes down. <clears throat> GWT passes me the widget that the mouse went down in, and it passes me the X and Y offset from the upper left-hand corner of the widget. So what I do is I save the offsets for some intense mathematics later on. <laughs> And then I call DOM set capture. Does anybody know what this does? DOM set capture focuses mouse events on this element and only on that element until you call DOM dot release capture, which sets event handling back to normal. That means if I have a huge DOM tree with 10 million elements and I want to drag one widget around, I don't have 9,999,000 widgets saying, no, I'm not interested in that event. No, I'm not interested in that event, because it takes a lot of time for that many widgets to say no. <laughs> so we're going to focus event handling or mouse handling on our widget while we're dragging. We're going to set a flag here, because we don't want to drag when you just move the mouse over a widget. We want the mouse to go down and then move. Here's what I do on mouse move. I get the parent of the widget that the mouse was moved inside of. Of course, I know that's an absolute panel because my drag panel extends absolute panel. And here is where I set the position of the widget in which the mouse moved. And here's the intense mathematics to figure out the next location. And then finally, I have on mouse up. All I do is set that flag back to false, and then I call release capture to set event handling back to normal. So I did drag and drop, and I tested it. I, I created a bunch of widgets, and I threw them on the drag panel. I threw trees and, and flex tables and buttons and labels and images and all that stuff, and I was dragging them around, and everything was working fine, except I noticed that when I dragged a widget, and I went over an image, Firefox selected the image. And what it does is it kind of grays out the image, which totally ruined my drag and drop experience. What's happening is the browser is reacting to these events. Here's another example. This is a simple window that's an extension of pop-up panel that we're going to look at in our next demo. And what I've done is I've decorated pop-ups with borders so they look like windows and may make them behave more like windows. And here I have an image for a close button. If you want, you can grab that image and drag it around inside of Firefox. Because <laughs> Firefox, you can drag images. And that's an image, and it's in the page, and you can drag it around. We don't want the user to be able to do things like this. We don't want them to be able to drag around our close button or have the browser select an image when we drag over the image. So what do we do about this? Well, here's what we do. We tell the browser to butt the hell out. <laughs> and here's how we do it with an event preview. We create an event preview, which is an interface that defines one method. And when the mouse goes down or the mouse moves, we call this method right here. And what that method does is it prevents the browser's default reaction to mouse events. That's where the name of the method comes from. Uh, if I'd have written it, I would have called it browser butt out, because I think it's much cooler, but that's what we have. And then what I do is I add the event preview. When the mouse enters the widget, I add the event preview to the event preview stack. The way this works, you create an event preview, you add it to the event preview stack with this method, 
and your event preview gets first crack at all events. In fact, you can stop events from going any further if you want to. Uh, when the mouse leaves, I remove the event preview, which returns event handling to normal. This is crucial. <laughs> if I don't do this, then I can't do anything. I can't click in text fields or anything like that. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple more demos. So here's a drag and drop demo. I have some MP3 players on the left, some good, some bad. <laughs> and I have two drop targets on the right. So I can drag these guys around. Notice that when I start dragging, I change the cursor to indicate that a drag is underway just in case the fact that the iPod's actually moving isn't evidence enough. <laughs> so two things. This is a valid drop target. Notice the drag under effect. How am I doing that, by the way? Anybody know? Add style name. <laughs> it's the answer to all my questions. Um, same thing here. Notice the no drop cursor. How am I doing the no drop cursor? Add style, just told you. <laughs> Add style name, come on. Um, and then you can drag them and drop them in their respective shopping carts. Someday I sit at home for hours just dropping in those carts. <laughs> and then finally we have the art gallery. So GWT has a pop-up panel class. And by default, it really has no CSS applied to it. The background color of a pop-up is the same as the background color of the browser. So if you open up a pop-up with nothing in it and no CSS applied to it, it kind of looks like a hole in the browser. Uh, not only that, if you click outside of a pop-up, by default, it hides itself, which is, is not very good if you want a window. Uh, I wanted the users to be able to click outside of the window without it disappearing, so I implemented a simple window class. And these are just... Uh, images, but if you click on these guys, we're going to create some windows here. And you can drag these windows around and resize them. When I resize, I scale the images as I'm resizing here. Uh, notice I move the mouse over here. I have to click on a window to bring it to front. I do that, by the way, by manipulating the DOM elements Z index. <clears throat> So if you have overlapping windows, you can bring one to front by clicking on it. Uh, if you click this checkbox, then I bring them to front just as the mouse goes over them. Okay, one more thing. <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, the question is, can you open two instances of the same picture? Yeah, you can. Uh, the way I implemented it, you can't in that example, but sure, yeah, you can do that. Um, but, but by the way, I'm not really showing you any code in here. I'm sorry about that. If, if we had twice the amount of time, I would show you a lot of the code behind here, but I want to show you a bunch of cool stuff. Um, if you're interested in, in the nitty-gritty details above and beyond what I've shown you in the slides, uh, you can go to that website and download the code and uh, look at it yourself later on if you want. Viewports. One day, one day I was thinking about JViewport. How many people have done Swing in here, by the way? Or, but, let, let me re-ask. How many people have done AWT, SWT, or Swing? One of those frameworks. Keep, keep your hands up, and everybody just look around the room. This is most of us, right? GWT was made for those of you that raised your hands. Did you, do you realize what's going on here? How many of you have gone, gone through the struts filter? <laughs> Nobody even knows what a struts filter is, but people are raising their hand. Um, back, back in the 90s, we had swing. Remember that? Remember when we did cool stuff with swing all the time? We had drag and drop. We had all this cool stuff. Now we call those rich clients, right? 
There were no thing as rich clients back in, in the swing days. But the reason is we went through the struts filter, right? We, we wrote boring ass web applications that battered the user over the head with one form after another, right? Now we're back to doing cool stuff. Now we're back to being able to implement desktop applications like we used to be able to do in Swing. And one of those things is a viewport. I was thinking about JViewport one day from Swing, and I thought, oh, I wonder if GWT has a viewport class. And I looked, and no, there was no viewport class, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but you can write one in about, you know what PJ is? Nobody? Then I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> pure Java, OK? About 100 lines of pure Java code. My first viewport class was about 112 lines of code. Uh, currently, it's, it's about 85,000 because I got carried away. Um, <laughs> when, when I did the viewport, I need to be able to drag the view in the viewport, right? If you can't drag the view in the viewport, viewports are worthless. Uh, and so I did the focus panel trick. And uh, Kelly Norton, a GWT engineer, has, had been helping me quite, quite, for quite some time on my book. And, and I sent him the code to look at. And he wrote me back and he said, you know, focus panel is kind of heavyweight for what you want to do. Maybe you should just implement a simple mouse panel that sources mouse events. Of course, he didn't tell me how to do that. I had to figure that out on my own. And here's what I wound up with. So this extends simple panel, which can contain one widget, which of course can be a, a, a panel and can contain other widgets. Mouse listener collection is a GWT class. Inside the constructor, I sync events, and I sync mouse events. That means whenever a mouse event occurs inside one of these, GWT is going to call this method. Now, since I only sunk mouse events, I know this is a mouse event, and I fire it to mouse listeners if I have any. This class and this method are all built into GWT, so I didn't implement that. Uh, these two lines, there are these two methods are about two lines of code a piece. I didn't have quite enough room to fit them on the slide, so, but that's it. And then we have the viewport. The viewport extends absolute panel, so I can move that view at pixel locations. And it has a mouse panel as its single widget. When you set the view, I set the widget inside the mouse panel. So when you drag the view, you're actually dragging the mouse panel that contains the view just like we were dragging a focus panel before with a widget inside it to do drag and drop. All right, let's, let's get rid of these windows. By the way, these windows stay up when you go to another tab here because they, they are sort of windows. Uh, this is interesting too, watch this. See the scroll bar? <laughs> Isn't that cool? I don't know how that works, but... <laughs> <laughs> Safari doesn't do that. Safari puts a scroll bar on the bottom like it's supposed to, so I don't know if that's a feature or not. Uh, th that's interesting though because I'm often asked, do you see browser differences? And uh, here's one of them. Okay, so I, I don't know what can be done about this. In fact, yeah, <laughs> where's Safari? So here's the Safari, or the web app running in Safari. And if you look at this guy, let's go to Art Gallery, create a window. Whoops, <laughs> it's my fault. See the scroll bar is down at the bottom. So yeah, I do see little differences like this every once in a while, but, but I can tell you that, that probably 95 to probably 98% of my code runs exactly the same in the two browsers that I test with. <laughs> and no, I don't have IE on my system. <laughs> it's against my religion. So here, here's a map of the world, and it's in a viewport, so we can drag the map around. Um, in spite of what we may think, this is not the whole world. <laughs> and if you wanted to get to, uh, let's say, Australia, we could come down here and we could wheel up, let up the mouse, come back, wheel up, let up the mouse, come back. 
Where is Australia? And it is down here, right? There it is. <laughs> um, but you know, it would be a lot cooler if instead of that, to get to Alaska, or to uh, Alaska, yeah, to get to Australia, it'd be a lot cooler if we could just do this. There it is. Um, this is automated scrolling. It's similar to Apple's iPhone. If you have a list of contacts and you have more contacts that fit on the screen, I hear some people do, <laughs> you can flick your finger and it goes brrr like that until your contact comes into view and then you tap on the glass. This is the same sort of thing. What I'm doing is I'm animating scrolling in the direction you move the mouse and at a speed relative to how many pixels you covered when you were moving the mouse. If more than one second elapses between mouse down and mouse up, I don't do anything. So if you do a quick drag, I drag the view and animate it. By the way, I'm using a GWT timer here to constantly update the location of the view within the viewport. But this is phenomenal. What struts action does that? <laughs> So once we click on this, we stop the animation. And here's one final demo. We are at two new, actually, let me, uh, we're at two new Montgomery Street, San Francisco. Uh, the Yahoo web service Map web service does not like spaces in city names. So when I click on get map, I'm making an RPC call to the server. And on the server, I'm making a call out to the Yahoo Maps web service. And I'm asking it for 12 URLs of the address that I typed in at different Zoom levels. I open a window and display that map. Of course, you know what's in this window, right? A viewport is inside this window, so I can drag this map around. This map is 2,000 pixels wide by 2,000 pixels high, and our location is marked with a red star, so we can find that, maybe. That's close enough. <laughs> Where are we? Ah, there we are. Notice this widget floats above the map. Even if I'm doing animated scrolling, this guy floats above the map as it's animating. Not only that, but as this window is animating, I can resize it. Not only that, but we can come back here and do that. Check this out. Watch this. We go back, it's going to fade in. The map's going to fade in while it's scrolling. Whoa! <laughs> so we can type any address we want in here and get another map. Let's, uh, I wonder if we could do, say, four New Montgomery. Yep, there's somebody next door. And of course, now we have zoom levels. So we can load a different zoom level here. In fact, while that's loading, let's do this. Yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. Get out of the struts filter. This is where it's at. This is awesome stuff. We have been released from the bondage of struts, right? <laughs> By the way, GWT is almost primarily a client-side framework. Uh, there's really nothing on the server. So you can get to the server with RPC calls, but once you're there, where's the built-in database integration? Uh, there is none. There is really nothing on the server. 
but there are other frameworks that do things on the server. And GWT can easily coexist with those. If I had a longer presentation here, I would show you a Struts application with a GWT widget in the Struts web page. So those of you that are Struts developers, there's hope for you guys. <laughs> when, when you go back to work next week, you can add custom widgets, custom GWT widgets, to your Struts web pages if you want. Of course, to know how to do that, you need this. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. You know, David, it occurs to me, if you had awakened your wife and showed her this, you might be saving a lot of money on divorce lawyers. This is cool. <laughs> that money's already gone, Greg. <laughs> but by the way, I have, to, I have to tell you guys one more thing. Uh, I was up late one night and I was working on this. <laughs> and I got it to work. And my wife was asleep in her room. And so, <laughs> so I went in and I said, hey, come here, come here. I gotta show you. She said, no, no, I'm tired. I said, really? She said, no, it's not that stupid thing that drops down. I said, no, no, this is cool. <laughs> she came in. I had this running. I had her animate the map. She did it. The map started scrolling. She turns to me and she says, damn, that's really cool. I said, you're damn right. Get your ass back to bed. <laughs> the next thing on the agenda is lunch. And I know you're all hungry. We don't have to be back here again until 2.15. Lunch is being served downstairs in the same room where we had the product showcase. David will be hanging out there. And you also get another dose of David tomorrow for the opening conversation, which I think will be a little bit different now that you've heard David from the earlier conversations this week. Uh, at 2.15 in this room, we have Joel Weber talking about building widgets, oddly enough. And then in the other room, if I can read my notes, uh, we have internationalization. So you've got two choices after lunch. I will take one question, and if David thinks it's a really, really, really good question, you win a free book. Oh, I have one guy in the back who's desperate for the free book. David, uh, we have a bunch of existing old swing applications that are basically uh, pretty basic CRUD applications. We're looking at uh, either doing them with JSF uh, or, or the toolkit. Um, what would you recommend? I know you've written books on both of them. And how would you sell it to management? Uh, I, to, to be honest, I can't tell you because there, there are so many variables that come into play as, as to what web framework to pick. Um, yeah, you have to look at, at the, the skill source that you have on your team. You have to look at what kind of application you're building. G generally, if you're building a, if you want to build a desktop-like application that runs in the browser, I don't think you can beat GWT. In fact, you'll have a very hard time doing that with something like JSF. On the other hand, if, if your application is more of a web 1.0, a classic web app where it's essentially a series of forms, JSF and Struts and Tapestry and WebWork and all those frameworks are very good at doing that kind of thing. Uh, the nice thing about JSF and frameworks like Seam is they have a lot of cool stuff on the back end. Seam, like Ruby on Rails, will introspect your database and create scaffolding for you, which is really nice. So, so you get all this built-in integration on the back, Luckily, as I said before, GWT is totally client-side, so, so there's nothing on the server that's going to interfere with the JSF lifecycle, for instance. And in fact, there are already integration projects for Struts and, J and GWT, for JSF and GWT, for Seam and GWT. So, so if you want to use those frameworks together, you can do that. 